trigonometric graphs. If we extend the domain, say, to minus 360 degrees to 720 degrees for the graph of y equals sine of x, we can see that the graph of y equals sine of x repeats itself periodically, both left and right. So when we drew out the graph of y equals sine of x, originally we started at 0 degrees and we went up as far as 360 degrees. So this was all we drew, from 0 to 360 degrees. But actually, the graph of y equals sine of x continues on forever to the left and to the right. So these are our x values and these are our y values. So again, notice that the graph y equals sine of x never goes above 1 and never goes below minus 1. A function such as f of x equals sine of x, which behaves in this way, is called a periodic function. And its graph, y equals sine of x, is a periodic graph. We may consider a periodic graph to be composed of a basic building block, repeated to infinity in both directions. The basic building block is not unique, but always has the same width called the period. One possible view of the basic building block of the sine graph is shown opposite. So this is the period of 360 degrees or 2 pi, and this is what repeats itself. The period of the sine graph is 360 degrees or 2 pi if working in radians. One other feature we consider is the range. This is the interval on the y-axis, from the lowest y-value on the graph to the highest. From the graph above, or in the previous slide, we can see that the lowest y-value is minus 1, and the highest y-value is 1, thus the range for the sine graph is minus 1 to 1. So this is the basic building block of the graph y equals sine of x. The period is 360 degrees, or 2 pi, and then it starts to repeat itself. And the range goes from 1 down as far as minus 1. The cosine graph. The graph of the function f of x equals cos of x is y equals cos of x. And it may be constructed in the same way as the sine graph. If required, we can make a table of values of x in the given domain and calculate the corresponding values of y. The shape of the cosine graph is identical to that of the sine graph. The only difference is in the location. The cosine graph cuts the y-axis at 0, 1, unlike the sine graph which cuts the y-axis at 0, 0. The diagram below shows the cosine graph in the domain of x values from minus 360 degrees up as far as 720 degrees. So up until now we had just seen the cosine graph from 0 up as far as 360 degrees. So this is the shape that we had seen. But obviously it repeats forever to the left and to the right. So this is the period of the cosine graph or one of its building blocks and just like the sine graph it is 360 degrees or 2 pi. So the period of the cosine graph is 360 degrees or 2 pi if working in radians. The basic building block of which the graph is constructed may be considered to be the u-shape shown opposite. However, like the sine graph, this is not unique. The range of the cosine graph is minus 1, 1, as can be seen from the diagram above. So the highest point on the y-axis is 1, and the lowest point is minus 1. So the range for the cosine graph is the same as the range for the sine graph. We can summarize some of the key features of the graphs y equals sine of x and y equals cos of x. So the midway line. The midway line is the x-axis. This is the horizontal line that lies halfway between the highest points and the lowest points on the graphs. The maximum and minimum. The maximum y value is the greatest y value that the graph reaches. For these curves, this is 1. The minimum y value is the least y value that the graph reaches. For these curves, this is minus 1. The range. The range of both graphs is bracket minus 1 comma 1 bracket and this is the interval from the minimum to the maximum amplitude the amplitude is the distance from the midway line 
which is the x-axis, to the maximum or minimum. In both cases, so y equals sine of x and y equals cos of x, this is 1. The period. The period of both graphs is 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. From the graphs y equals sine of x and y equals cos of x, we can see that the functions f of x equals sine of x and f of x equals cos of x defined from or to or, or being the real number set, are neither injective nor surjective. Hence, they are not bijective. Later, we will see that by restricting the domain and the codomain, we can construct bijective functions for these. So just a reminder about injective functions. When a function is represented by a curve, the function is injective if no horizontal line cuts the curve more than once. The diagram opposite shows a curve which represents an injective function. So we see this horizontal line here cuts this curve just once. Whereas if we were to draw in a horizontal line anywhere along our y equals sine of x or y equals cos of x graph, it would cut the curve many times, infinitely. And now just a recap on surjective functions. If a function is represented by a curve, then a function is surjective if every horizontal line in the codomain intersects the curve at least once. The diagram opposite shows part of a curve which goes down forever on the left and up forever on the right. Because each, because each horizontal line intersects the curve at least once, the function it represents is surjective. So we can see this curve here goes down forever on the left and it goes up forever on the right. So we know that anywhere we draw on a horizontal line, it will cut the curve at least once. But with the graphs of y equals sine of x and y equals cos of x, if we were to go above 1 or below minus 1, our horizontal line would not cut the curve. Therefore, the graphs of y equals sine of x and the graph of y equals cos of x is not surjective. And since they are not surjective or injective, they are not bijective either.